Read all the stories at homeoffice.studio and watch all the videos to get an exceptionally advanced, entertaining education. Good morning. I just thought I, I've been trying to get back into the habit of writing and um, I'm not doing very good about that. I've been sitting here kind of, I've gotten like seven lines written in four hours, you know, so I've been doing other things, you know, and so, you know, I figured, out, well, let me make a video. The subject I want, I was trying to write about is economy, working on the economy and the environment at the same time, you know, because it's one of the, you know, it's always, when you think about working on the economy, you know, a lot of times it's, you work on the economy or you work on the environment and the, and the two are kind of not compatible, but I kind of don't, you know, I mean, in the past, that's just the way it was, you know, because people were working on the economy. They weren't so much worried about the environment, you know, we weren't having such a huge influence in the environment like we are now. And now that we've realized, hey, man, we, we need to pay attention to the effect we're having on the environment, you know, the environmental impact of our economic activity. And we need to make sure that there's, it's sustainable. Our, econ our economy is sustainable. It has to, you know, we have to pay attention to that. And so, you know, I, that's... The way you start doing that is you start doing, you know, being your own self is, uh, you know, your environmental impact, you know, and think about how you're, what effect are you having on the environment in your personal life. Number one is don't litter. You know, I'm just one of the, I live in a beautiful city of Seattle and it's, uh, you know, they keep the downtown cleaned up pretty well, but the rest of the city is just covered in garbage. And I, it's so sad. You know, you get outside of Seattle, you get in the suburbs, and it, it looks pretty decent. You know, it's, it looks like what it's supposed to, it should look like. Oh, well, I'm sure they got messy areas, but I mean, in general, the, like if you drive around, I ride around on the bus. If you ride around on the bus, once you get outside of Seattle, it's pretty clean. And, you know, and the architecture is neat, you know, all the sidewalks are nice and everything like that. In the city of Seattle, it's like, what in the world? You know, it's like, you know, it's like living in some kind of a, you know, the way that my, I really first began to notice this one time I went to get some eyeglasses. I went to the optometrist store and, and I got off the bus and I noticed at this, shopping area in Seattle and I was walking and the sidewalks were all cracked up and the, there were potholes in the street and there was just a, a lot of gravel and a lot of weeds and I'm looking around and the stores look like warehouses and I'm going like what in the world I know because I lived in Denver for 16 years and I could tell you in Denver you go, you go shopping in architectural wonderland, you know, I mean, it's like gorgeous. The buildings, the landscaping, everything is just gorgeous. And I just, I couldn't believe how much, you know, the, it wasn't like that in Seattle, you know, and, uh, and the trash, there's, you know, especially on Interstate 5, I ride the bus home and on uh, Interstate 5 and I'm, every day and the ground is just covered in trash and it was the same when I lived up north and you know there was trash that was just stayed there for years and I'm going like wow why don't people clean that up why, why isn't there crews because I know in Denver they had crews you'd see them all the time walking around, you know picking up trash and I just and we got all these homeless people in Seattle I just can't believe we don't hire a bunch of these homeless people to go out and pick up the trash and just keep it that's an ongoing thing it should be a constant ongoing thing and uh, you know that's one thing and but that's one way that you could uh, contribute to keeping a sustainable environmental economy and that is by not littering and uh, cleaning up after yourself if you make a mess clean it up 
you know, and um, when you design your anything, you know, like products, be mindful of the environmental impact, you know, the whole chain, what do they call that, uh, you know, from the time you, you extract resources from the ground and the whole entire manufacturing process and and then the delivery of everything and, you know, from life cycle, the whole entire life cycle of a product, pay attention to the environmental impact of that. And, and when you design it, you design it, you know, it's going to have an environmental impact just make sure that it, the environmental impact is sustainable and that it's not unnecessarily damaging the economy or I mean the environment you know but the thing is and the other thing is you, you got to do the economy you can't just ignore the economy either because that's like this whole thing about oil. I used to work on in the oil field. I worked for Halliburton fracking the ground, fracturing the ground so we could get the gas out of there. And and it was a good paying job. It was a great job, you know, and it was a great business. And and these environmentalists are running around like they're terrorists. And, you know, terrorizing people for doing their job and working, you know, mining the earth. I mean, mining is a normal part of the economy, always has been, and probably always will be. It's not a terrible thing. And it's, and the other weird thing about it is, is you know, I don't want to get into a big conversation about Halliburton, but that was, of all the companies I've ever worked for, they had the most advanced health, safety, and environment program of any company I've ever worked for. We have meetings about it every single day. And most, most of the time, more than once a day. You know, we would have one in the morning, first thing in the morning, we'd have a safety meeting. And then we'd have a safety meeting for before we started any jobs. And, and we're constantly always talking about not making any, you know, putting any pollution on the earth, you know, cleaning up after ourselves and making, keeping our, our workspace clean, you know, and I've never, that's the only company I ever worked for that did that. So, you know, and I'm not saying, you know, they do need to keep the pressure on them so they keep doing that. But what I'm saying is, is that they're, they're in a business, they're in a very legitimate business. Energy is going to be a, an important part of the economy. And I, I, I do agree that hydrocarbons are not the best way to produce energy. I think, I think of hydrocarbons as kind of like, uh, um, it's like very much like mother's milk. You know, yeah, we used hydrocarbons to kind of prime the pump to get the, uh, the, our industrial economy started. And once we do that, then we'll start using regular energy. And the energy we'll probably end up using is probably going to be, I, I believe it's, there's going to be, a, it's going to come in stages. The, the next stage right now, it's not going to be solar. And, you know, solar is going to be part of it. That's, there's nothing wrong with solar and wind and, and, tr and tidal and all those kinds of things, renewables. What What's going to I think the next big, what will replace the hydrocarbons is uh, fusion, you know, and fission, fission, you know, nuclear power. And you, you use fusion power and fission power and you get really good at it and you learn how to do it and you learn how to handle the waste and put deal, deal with the waste in, appropriately. And, but you don't, uh, and you learn that technology. And when you learn that technology, that's our transmutations of elements technology. And the transmutation of elements technology will, once we learn how to do that, you know, you can, you can create what, as much of any material as we need. You know, you can use, you know, you can use fusion reactors to fuse atoms together and you can use fission reactors to split atoms apart. And once we learn how to do that and kind of get to where we've been doing it for a long time, it's, oh yeah, and you kind of get a whole industry 
scaled up on that, we'll get really good at it, and we know, and we'll know how to produce as much. And we can just have generators. They, they generate electricity, and they produce as much material as you need. And you can just order a, a bunch of iron or tin or whatever, diamond, gold, as much gold as you need, you know, and and order it, and then they'll, they'll produce it and bring it, and you'll get it. And it's, it, you know, because I just think that whole science and technology, and there'll be a whole economy, the whole world economy will be based on that for however long, a generation or so, you know, a cent couple centuries probably. But then ultimately what we'll learn how to do is, you know, there we know that the universe is uh, mostly energy. You know, the material that we can see is a tiny fraction of the universe. And... That that material is floating around in an ocean of power, and what we know it's there, and we kind of you know it's. If you really want to know the truth, it, I'm starting to think it might be going back to the sailing ship days. We maybe kind of learn that technology, learn how they use the wind. You know how they use the wind to get to push them around the sailing ships. They might be able to do that. I don't know, you know, but that, that power, once we figure out how to harness that power, that we'll be able to do all kinds of things that are just beyond anything that we can even imagine, really. Because, uh, you know, and making the jump to light speed for one thing, you know, you'd be able to use that power to generate gravity you know, you know, artificial gravity fields, you know, because I think that's going to be an important part of the technology. That's why, you know, all the, you hear all these stories about UFOs and, and they make these really dramatic, you know, turns, you know, sudden turns, acute angle turns and stuff like that. Um, and the, the only way they could do that is if they were producing their own gravity. And I figured that that technology of producing the gravity is going to be the same technology that enables them to jump from one solar system to another. But I don't know. It could be two different technologies, but I, I don't know. And But the main thing is, is, you know, that's kind of far in the future. I think the, the one that is going to pull us out of the hydrocarbon to where we can use, you know, Everybody wants to, it, it, converting all of our engines to electric, that's easy. We, we already know how, we, have, we already have the technology to do that. The problem is, is generating the electricity to drive those electric motors. Um, and that's the problem. And, and wind and solar is just not going to do it. You know, I mean, that'll kind of be a small segment of energy but it's not enough it's going to be fusion and fission it's going to be nuclear power and we're and we'll have to learn how to you know and you can use the same transmutation of elements technology to convert the waste the nuclear waste into harmless substances you know whatever the issue you know because of radioactive waste you know and, and you would just work on you know do your transmutation of elements, run it through the factory or whatever process it is, it ends up being, because we don't know how to do it right now. I just believe that we will. Transmutations of elements technology and our energy technology are going to be kind of closely related. And uh, and we'll use hydrocarbons in our, in our chemical industry, you know, not our energy industry. And, uh, you know, but we always have to think about all those jobs, like shutting down all the pipelines. It's, it's really corrupt for the president of the United States to order all these oil pipelines and gas pipelines that were already under construction, already paid for, and, and to order them to stop building them. And then to go around the world and practically beg foreign countries to start producing more oil, I'm going, that is totally irrational. 
you know, and I'm going, it's not sustainable. You know, I mean, natural gas is the cleanest hybrid hydrocarbon, you know, I mean, they usually, they used to burn it off just to get rid of it because it was like a, you know, they're drilling for oil and they, you know, getting a lot of, there's a lot of natural gas there. And so they just would burn off the natural gas because they, you know, it was a waste product. And now we figured out, well, hey, man, why don't we just use that natural gas to make energy, make electricity? And so that's what we started doing. And now they want to kill that industry. And I'm going like, the environmentalists want to kill that industry. That's the cleanest burning fuel we have. And it's just not, it's weird. And so, you know, we got to keep working on that. And, uh, you know, so whenever you may, because you got, you're going to be working on your environment and your economy at the same time. And you'd have to consider both together, not separately or anything like that. And uh, and work from from the from the extracting the resources from the ground and working all the way through and what, like checking every part of it from the manufacturing to the delivery. You got to deliver the stuff. How much an environmental impact is delivering that product going to be? You know, from the time you pick up the raw materials and get it to the factory, and then you get the finished products from the factory to the store, and then from the store to the, you know, end user, you know, and uh, things like that. Building sustainable cities that uh, where people, people, most people, a lot of people could just work at home and then they, they go outside and travel around and interact with the, you know, for, as a, that's not, they don't, they, they do their work at home and then they move around for, for the fun of it, you know. People aren't having to, you know, we're not hunter-gatherers anymore. We don't need to go out and hunt and gather. We have this global cloud of artificial intelligence where we can all work on that and build, add value to that. And the value that you add to that global cloud of artificial intelligence is, is your work. That's what you produce. And you produce that and it's, it, it doesn't take a lot of energy. It takes a little bit, electricity, you know, to run your computer. And, uh, but you don't have to drive around to do it. You can do it anywhere. And, uh, we can build a whole world economy on this. It's the information age economy, and it's a good thing, you know, I say, and I think anyway, and and so, and then we'll have to deal with, there's gonna be consequences, social consequences, and that we'll need to deal with. The other thing is educating kids in school. We, we don't, kids don't need to go out to school. The, the education can be brought right to their computers and they can watch it on their computer. The parents will be in charge of the education and they buy the you know the course material from probably private companies that are, you know, the government, the Department of Education won't produce the products, they'll, but they'll make sure that the private companies that are producing it are doing, are not doing anything nefarious. You know, because obviously we got to watch on that because if, whenever we don't do that, weird things happen and we find out about it and it's a huge problem. We just keep track of it right all along, you know, things like that. And just keep and build a sustainable system that's that's uh, sustainable and, and successful. You know, it's prosperous. It's, it's productive system of, of productivity and uh where and it's easy for people to to work and be productive and uh i'm thinking a lot of it's going to be creating content uh some of it can be creating other aspects of it you know the technology you know uh, the private comp the big businesses they're going to have a role to play okay but what i'm my view is, is that what we need is millions and millions of small businesses individual entrepreneurs small family 
oriented, uh, you know, websites, you know, the fam whole families working on their website and they got a little store and they do this and that and supply something valuable. And the, and the market is the whole entire planet Earth, so it's a huge market of billions of people. And so even a small niche market is going to be valuable, you know, and you can earn an income from that and learn how to do that and get really good at it. And, and you got to, you know, and then the kids will get good at it from this, you know, they'll be working on it when they're little kids. And by the time they're adults, they'll be really good at it. And you do it as a family. And uh, that's my kind of dream. That's what I'm trying to do with whole, even though I don't, I'm kind of by myself, I can't believe, you know, I've kind of driven everybody away, I guess. I, I know I've got a bad temper and, you know, and so, and I've been pretty stubborn and not very reliable, you know, because I've been working on this for years, decades I've been working on this. Nobody believed in me and I just, keep working on it and caused a lot of trouble and done a lot of stupid things that harmed myself and other people. And, you know, like quitting good jobs because either I didn't like something or, you know, or I wanted to work on this business, you know, and I kept, I wanted to work on my own business instead of somebody else's. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, and I caused myself a lot of trouble. So I just figured I I wanted to produce some content. You know, I've been telling these stories like this for a while now, and uh, I like it, but I'm not sure it's the best format. I It's a good format. There's nothing wrong with the format. It's just that my production system here is pretty amateur and, you know, I'd like to have a really fancy intro and and have the everything a lot better. You know, my the setting, you know, my little studio here. I like my studio. My studio, it was the complete like, accident that, that with that background. You know, I like that background. I know some people are not going to like it, but that's okay. I like it. And... Um, I'm a patriot. I, I like the United States and I like the United Nations. I should get a UN flag and put it on this wall right up here, you know, because I like the United Nations. And uh, I, I've always thought, I mean, it was just, I read the all the, you know, the Constitution and all that. And I said, yeah, I agree with all that. You know, and then I read the United Nations Charter and I go, yeah, I like that. I agree with most of that. You know, I mean, it's a, I don't agree with everything about anything. They're, they're both man-made organizations. You know, they're not perfect. They're, they're man-made. and But I do agree that they're both, that's human civilization. I'm a patriot. I was a patriot of the United States. And now I'm also a patriot of the United Nations. And it's kind of like, you know, if you got three kids, you can love all three of the kids, you know. Loving one of your kids doesn't diminish the love you of your other kids. And it's the same thing with patriotism. I can love the United States and the United Nations. And I do. And I think we should all make them work. I mean, they're neither one of them are perfect and they have to be well, you know, they have to be well run, well, well executed. Because all they are is a system, and the, the people that are executing that system are it's going to affect whether it is a good system or not, you know. Because you know, and the main thing I say, oh, and I say this a lot, is w bullies. We got to stop the bullies and not tolerate that anywhere on earth. You know, we got to get the drugs. Drugs is the worst plague of this generation of human nature and civilization. You know, in the past, it wasn't that big of a deal in some, some circumstances, like if you're living in an ice age, you know, alcohol was actually probably pretty good for you, you know, because you can use alcohol as a medicine. You can use a lot of drugs as a medicine. But what's going on right now is a, is a plague, and it's killing people or thousands of people every year. And we need to stop it. You know, stop, don't, you know, teach kids not to start smoking cigarettes, teach kids not to use drugs. Marijuana is one of the worst drugs of all. 
you know, it's, you know, they call that hashish, you know, I can't, I can't remember which one is named after the other, but hashish and assassin are th the same word. I think hashish is named after assassin, but it might be the other way around. And the whole point is, is you, they would give the assassin a whole bunch of hashish and they'd be so stoned that they wouldn't care because that's exactly what THC does. It doesn't eliminate the pain like heroin or some of the other drugs do. You know, it, you still feel the pain. You just don't care. And that sense of, um, I call that the sense of compassion. You know, heroin uh, suppresses your sense of pain. THC suppresses your sense of compassion. And I know people think that there's, oh, we're, we're compassionate and environmental. Oh, no. You know, that's why people, they, they get stoned and then they don't care about all, every, all the crazy stuff that's going on in society. That's why the crazy stuff is getting worse and worse, man. <laughs> because everybody just goes home and gets stoned and they don't have to worry about it. No, that's not how civilization is going to work. We're, you know, that's not sustainable. You know, we've got to care about what's going on. If we're angry, we're there, why are we angry? You know, you don't get rid of the angry by taking a, a drug. You, you get rid of, you know, you, you solve the anger by figuring out what's wrong and, and solving the anger. And that way, and it's going to be, we're going to all have to work together. We're not going to be able to just be angry and hate each other because we don't agree about things. We're going to have to find common ground. That's where the one common faith of all mankind comes in. You know, that's the the solution to the Tower of Babel effect, which is the end of civilization, you know, is the Tower of Babel effect, is one common faith. That's the only solution. There isn't any other solution. You know, it's the cause of effect. You know, the one common faith causes unity and you know civilization you know the lack of one common faith because that's really all it is it's just like light you have the light and then the absence of light that's all darkness is it's the absence of light and there's no substance of darkness darkness is not a substance it's just the absence of light same thing with civilization and spirituality. You know, religion, our one common faith is the substance. And, and when we have that, then we have civilization because civilization is an effect of religion. And uh, the, you know, and the, when, that, when we say, oh, we don't need to follow those rules, those are old fashioned rules. You know, and uh, we don't, you know, and so we abandon our, the principles that we use to create the civilization and that's the end of the civilization, you know, and, and when people start trying to say, make up their own religion and stuff like this and, and there's, everybody's got a different religion, that's the Tower of Babel effect. And, it, and, and it'll never, it can, it's, it'll never, there's no way you can have that. And it's, it's civilization will end every single time. There's, it's, it happens, that's what, because it's like the laws of, it's like the law of gravity. It doesn't really matter whether you believe in it or even realize it exists or there is such a thing as a law of gravity. The effects of the law of gravity are, they don't depend on what you believe. It's the same thing with the whole, the one common faith. When everybody has that one common faith and every that one common law, and one common culture, one you know, and civilization, one common language that everybody understands and can can so we can communicate with each other. That's how you build civilization. And without that, civilization ends. There's because that's it's it's an essential feature of civilization is the one common faith the one common law the one common language the one common common culture you know that's why agriculture is such a 
important feature of civilization. You know, they started at uh, Gobekli Tepe. I, I always say, I don't know if this is true, but and Ad, uh, it was at uh, Noah. Adam lived in Turkey too, but he went out to the east, which is Iran. And he founded that first civilization in Iran. And that became a global civilization that built all the stone megaliths that we find all over the earth. The underwater ones are the ones that make me think it was during the Ice Age. Because there's, there's stone cities underwater off the coast of Egypt and India that are two that I know for certain. And there's other ones that are around the world that, yeah, that may be too. I think there's one out in the Canary Islands in the Atlantic. You know, there's big cities out in the ocean, you know, and going along with the cities in Peru and Egypt and Cambodia and China, and there's big stone megaliths, they call them. Those, are, those were built by during the Ice Age, in a, the civilization founded by Adam. And then when the Ice Age ended and the sea level rose up and flooded all the big coastal cities, which would have been the biggest cities, just like they are now, most of the big cities are called pretty close to the ocean, then the whole civilization collapsed into a dark age and everybody forgot about civilization. And we went back to the hunter-gatherer days. But then the people created, you know, Noah and his kids mainly founded Gobekli Tepe, which was a big university, kind of a, back then, the church and the state were one thing, and they founded civilization again, and it kind of spread out from there. And that's the civil, this civilization we're in now. And, um, so now we're just, uh, we have to build, now what we're in is a global, we're, we've reached this stage where a global civilization, and it has to be sustainable. In order to be sustainable, there has to be one common faith and one common language. Well, you know, we'll, we'll probably transition away from using hydrocarbons, but, but we will definitely be, you know, intentionally regulating the economy and the environment, you know, that will be, we'll have people working on that all the time. They'll, they'll be government officials working on that. We're going to have free enterprise because part of their job is going to be protecting free enterprise. And the, and the benefit of free enterprise is the creative freedom of the individuals, you know, when they're free and they may, they can make things that nobody else ever thought of. That is the most productive system in their world. There's no, you know, it's, that's just one of those natural laws. When people are free to create what they want to create and use and, and has free enterprise, it just by nature will produce the most, you know, everything. And so we need to guard that and nurture that. And our government needs to do that, and there need because there we do it needs to be well regulated, because especially when you have that power, I I figured the power to make that jump to light speed is probably going to it would be so powerful you could destroy all life on the Earth or any other planet, and so it definitely needs to be well regulated. You know, I mean, you can't just let it, criminals have that kind of power and things like that. You know, and so we're going to have all that and big nuclear power plants, especially, you know, that's going to be a really, you know, big business operation. At least to begin with, maybe they'll be able to build a little personal computer sized, you know, just kind of like the computers, you know, miniature little fusion reactors that you can carry around with, you know, but I don't know. I'm, I've always thought of it as a big giant factories where they can produce tons and tons of steel, you know, and things like that, you know, to build uh, skyscrapers and for people to live in, live and work in skyscrapers. They, they may not have skyscrapers, you know. I like skyscrapers. They're like art, you know, and uh, and I like some of the stuff that's going on with architecture and beautiful cities. You know, we're working on, even, even here in Seattle, like Terry Avenue, it's this beautiful little street. 
with trees and flowers and everything like that. That's what cities should be like. All, all cities, you know, the whole city should be like that. And um, so just think about the, the environmental impact you are having in your society, your, your country, your nation, or town, or city, you know, and, and be consciously aware of that and be mindful of your the, vir the environmental impact you are having on Earth. And uh, be productive, you know, figure out a way to be productive I say learn how to make money on your computer. I'm trying to turn my computer into a cash machine, pumping money into my bank account. But I'm kind of getting a little, I'm, I'm not so sure it's going to work. I mean, I wish, I hope it does. I wish I wanted to, and I'm working as hard as I can, but I, I'm stuck and I'm out of resources. And I'm just, I got to get this thing going, man. And I, I wish I had help. I, you know, I, I caused so much trouble. You know, most of my family and friends. I mean, I moved out here to Seattle, and I've got a few friends out here, but they're not all that interested in computers. And so, I guess I'll keep working on it. Keep working. You know, persistence is a good thing. You know, I've got it set up so if I do lose everything, the website will last for at least. Of a while, of you know, several months, you know, because it's a probably by next year, sometime next year, you know, it might I can't remember exactly when. I, I think the bill on that is on the website is I'm not sure when the bill is for that, but um, you know, I got the web. The book for is for sale on Home, home Office. Studio, you can go to homeoffice.studio and buy the book, Holistic Home Office, and read it. It's a good book. It's not, you know, it's my first book I ever wrote, and I produced the whole entire thing all by myself. You know, I didn't have a publisher do anything. I just, I, I did it, and I produced the book, and I used, well, I used KDN Live, and then I got tricked into using uh, uh, Adobe technology and now I got to pay for a whole year subscription to that crap and I, I'm telling you what I'm so furious about that just to get that book published and if I would have just known what I was doing I would have done I wouldn't even have needed to use that and I you know I had a frustration I, I signed up for a subscription of Adobe and, and that's the only thing I ever used it for was to publish that book and uh and now I have to pay for a whole year's worth of Adobe Creative Cloud. This is why I use Linux and I promote it and I and I promote Linux. Because I hate that being, you know, hostage and having to pay for a, a year's worth of subscription to that private, you know, and they, they won't let you work with Adobe or any other I mean, you can't use Linux. You can't use Adobe products on Linux. So, you know, I don't want to use anything. I don't want anything to do with Adobe. You know, I, I, I got rid of the Microsoft because I read the user agreement and they, they own, they basically own the Microsoft Windows on your computer. And I'm going like, no, I don't agree to that. If I buy the computer, it's mine. I'm not renting that computer. I don't want to rent a computer. I want to buy it. I want to own it. I want to own it. It's mine. I can do whatever I want to with it. And I recommend that that's that you do that too. I, I as and and another thing is I don't particularly like the the Linux, you know the 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 GNU GPL is almost as bad as the Microsoft user agreement because it, what it says is nobody owns the software and that's not what I want. I don't want that. What I want is I own the software. It's my private property. Private property is a good idea and I believe people have a, it's a universal human right to own private property and they ought to be able to own their own private property. 
including the software on their computers. And so I encourage everybody to own your own private property, own the software on your computer and learn how to do that. Learn how to set it up and configure it because it doesn't do everything automatically because, you know, my, it doesn't have an army of Microsoft technicians dealing with it. And, you know, and the, I'm not totally against the Microsoft model, but because I have a Microsoft computer that I use sometimes because sometimes that's the best solution for me, but it's my decision. And I have this, my, my main computer is Linux because it's mine, I own it. And what I would like to get to is, I would like to, my dream about this is to build a BSD. Get, take a BSD. I, I would, one of my little ideas, you know, I kind of want to do the home office thing. That's not what I really want to do. But a kind of an, an alternative idea I have is to create a business that manufactures computers and I would use BSD instead of Linux, and I would probably create a new distribution of BSD that, uh, you know, with the BSD license is the key factor, and, and get it up to where it's, it's really a good one, you know, and, you know, and sell, the, you would make the money by selling the hardware. Uh, you know, and you would sell the computers with with the BSD software on it, and whenever the the people they could do whatever they want to with it, you would still maintain the you know the software, and you could, you could update it just like they do with Linux. But uh, if the company, you know, if the owner of that computer wants to change it and and separate from that that's their choice and they can do that and they can do all the updates themselves, you know, security updates and everything like that. You know, you would have to, I don't, you know, I'm not sure, but you would have their, I, I think you could do that where you'd have, uh, they would own the software, it would be their private property and they could do whatever they want to with it. But if they want to get the updates, they would have to, you know, leave at least the update system ready, you know, as a, you know, it, it, that would have to be set up according to whatever the the company, you know, the the whatever your operating system is, whatever you call it. I wonder what would be a good name for that, an operating system like that. You know, so anyway, that was just kind of an idea I've thought about doing. Um, I really just want to, uh, what I really want to do is create content, is what I want to do. And right now I'm talking about environment and, and economy and environment and working on the two together all the time. You, there's no, they're inseparable. And economy and environment are kind of like the heads and tails on a coin. You can't separate them. I mean, I suppose you could, but it would be worthless that would make either one of them worthless so that you can, another way to say it is the economy and environment are the yin and yang of productivity okay? you know so keep working keep being productive next now what i need to figure out now is how i know that i have downloaded stuff from my phone to my computer before. It's been a long time. I've been using OneDrive, but since I didn't pay my phone bill, my phone was turned on and off. I don't know if I would be able to use that this time. I might be able to because I, I still use the phone. It's just, you know, I use the, because it's my phone is a computer, so I, I can still use that, but so anyway, it's just, I'm just rambling on about this stuff. You know, keep working, keep making the world a better place, keep, uh, be happy and healthy, you know, eat good, fresh, whole food, avoid processed food as much as possible. Um, don't take any drugs, you know, drugs are poison. Drugs are chemical weapons. We should use, 
not only should we teach elementary school kids about the true nature of drugs and the effects that they have on people, and, and we should have the most state-of-the-art advanced treatment programs for drug abuse and addiction and all that. And um, the police, we should have very advanced, high, you know, high-tech police of that, you know, crime, that disorder, whatever it is, you know. And then we should also have a military uh, in drug traffic, you know, interdiction against international drug trafficking. You know, and we should use every available means to stop drug abuse and drug trafficking and get that problem solved. That'll solve a lot of problems right there. And, um, you know, that's one of one thing. The, the, the family, take care of your family. You know, uh, family uh, is, uh, you know, you got your... Uh, You know, your spirituality is the most important thing. One common faith is the most important feature of human nature and civilization. The next most important thing is family. So, and, and that a family is one man and one woman married to each other, raising kids, and their relatives, like, you know, the grandparents and the grandkids are all important, and aunts and uncles and all that. Cousins you know, take care of each other and nurture each other and strengthen that, and go, you know, protect your family and, and nurture your family. And um, it's a very important part of human nature. And and th all this crazy thing, you know, stuff about how to thinking that we can, you know, freedom is lawful, not lawless. You know, and, and the, the laws of biology and human nature and civilization are what they are. And they don't, it's not really a matter of personal opinion. Everybody doesn't, you know, you can't have everybody just uh, believe in anything they want. Because, I mean, they can believe anything they want. But you can't try to impose that belief on anybody. Because the laws of biology are just as real and constant as, as the laws of physics or chemistry or anything else. And, the, and the psychology also, there's laws of psychology that are just as real and constant as the laws of nature, of, of physics. And, you know, and we need to f understand those laws. We need to investigate them and, and follow those laws. That's how we can build, you know, advanced human health. Not by ignoring the laws of human nature and the laws of biology and psychology and saying, oh, we don't have to follow those rules. Those are old fashioned rules. No, no. Those, are, those laws will never change. The, law, the divine law of marriage will never change. It just is what it is. And it will never change. One man gets married to one woman and that's a family. They become one family. And um, that's part of human nature in civilization. And so, you know, take care of that, you know, and uh, eat right and uh, don't use drugs and, you know, be productive, you know, make some, create some content, create valuable content. You know, those are, there's those four dimensions of human nature and civilization are one common faith family values and uh, health and nutrition and exercise and then the fourth one is productive be productive you know and trade be a really good trader make, make, learn how to make deals get really good at making deals um, get good at negotiating get good at uh, you know communicating and trading and make good deals Make sure everybody you trade with gets a good deal, you know, because that way people will, will like making deals, you know, trading with you. And so, you know, have a great day. You know, this is a great, Earth is a beautiful place, man. And human civilization is, is thriving right now.
right now. It's booming. The, the world economy is booming. You know, there's always going to be setbacks and problems and natural disasters and everything that we're going to have to deal with. You know, and we, we're dealing with it and we're going on along and we're creating a sustainable civilization. And there's going to be rules and laws and you need to learn that what they are and understand them and follow the rules and laws and be an honorable citizen. And uh, eventually the whole world will be one country and people will be able to travel wherever they want to go and live wherever they want to live and everything like that. At this point, we still have nations and the nations are sovereign and we, you should follow the laws of whatever nation you live in and be an honorable citizen of the, the nation you live in and work towards one world unity and uh, we'll have that, that nation, that one world civilization. It's already here. It's just in a real kind of a preliminary stage. It's not, you know, we're in that, you know, it's a, it's a stage, you know, come in stages. And right now the, the United Nations is a pretty good system. And, it, it, you know, right, the nations are sovereign. The United Nations is not a sovereign government. It is a, it's, it's a federation of sovereign nations. And what, that'll probably evolve over time gradually. You know, it's not going to be perfect. It, you know, and it, it's not it, it's not perfect, and it probably will never be perfect because it can always you can always we can always improve human nature and civilization. So thanks for listening, and have a great day, and have a great life.